what we want to do is draw our horizon line or our eye level line in the lower portion of the picture plane. So we're going to come about a third up from the bottom. I'd say roughly three inches. Then we want to draw four orthogonals. And we're going to lay out our sketches. Uh, the top and the bottom. The top would represent the top of the buildings. The bottom would represent the road of the city we're going to draw. Okay, and then we're going to draw a series of vertical lines on the left and right side between the two orthogonals so we can kind of get a, a rough idea of a layout for our buildings. So it looks like everything's moving to a vortex. Okay, now you want to decide with your buildings which side is the front side and which side is the road side of the building. So the road side, all your lines will be orthogonal, the top and the bottom of windows and doors. And the front side, everything's flat like we normally draw. Okay. So at the top of your building or a box, which would represent a building, you want to draw a right angle, perpendicular, okay, for the front side, but you want to do the top of the building and the bottom of the building next to the road. And when you get closer up, you won't see the bottom of the buildings. So here I'm determining where do I draw it. So there you have it. Moving kind of quickly here, uh, sake of time. If you need to, rewind this film so you can see it again. But, uh, but you want to get your layout of your buildings. Now just do two or three, and you can make all your adjustments and changes as you move along. You want to do it in pencil, and always draw lightly with your pencil. Okay, here's a little closer up so you can see a little better. And once you get your your rough draft laid out, then you can start working in some details. I'm going to go over these lines just so you can see them a little better. Normally I wouldn't do it. I would start inking. But um, if you want to draw a few uh, pitch roofs up on top of the buildings, just like we did our house drawing before. Okay. And remember the ridge of the building that converges to the vanishing point. Okay, but also the front and back of the triangle part has to be parallel. Okay, here we're going to draw a second rooftop. side let's take this building and let's extend it higher up so on the road side we're going to extend the lines higher now it it seems like it shouldn't but the top of the building the orthogonal converges all the way down to that vanishing point so it's an extreme angle Second building, you can see reinforcing the lines again. See it a little better. And it just looks like a series of boxes right now. And that's kind of what you want for your city when you start laying it out. This is where, when you make your mistakes, you can erase them and just, you know, clean up your paper and keep moving on. You don't have to sweat it. Smaller. Okay. 
building your city up one building at a time be creative with your buildings they don't have to be like boxes shape them out however you want to that's the beauty of drawing it's yours you're the creator you make it how you want it to look and everybody's style is different I'll show you some of the student work later city even more in depth and some high rise buildings behind the other buildings so now it looks like there's more than one or two streets in your city Sometimes when you draw to the vanishing point, you want to do what's called a ghost line. You ghost your ruler down to the vanishing point, but you only draw the, the part that's needed for the top of your building so you don't have to erase the extended line. So I don't have all those extended lines to erase. Okay, so I'm going to speed this up. This is taking a while. So let's do this one. Alright, don't forget your orthogonal lines you want to pivot off the vanishing point use that as a pivot point and draw reference lines for the top and bottom of your windows and doors this way it saves you a lot of hassle on drawing each one individually so then you just draw your verticals or your verts and there you go it's pretty cool huh start inking this thing in. Now, the natural part to do is ink in your buildings up close to you first and then work your way back. By then you get kind of tired of it and all your details up close are what is most important to use. Jumping around here with a video so it doesn't last so long. And, uh, put in all your uh, little detail work. Now I'm making a brick wall. around the studio the other day and decided to record something. It's one of those Les Paul Epiphones. Doesn't sound too bad. It's kind of cool. So here I jumped on down after I did some more work. Drew in a few cars. The first two are real. You want to put uh, some details where you can see them. And then just little specs as you get farther away. So get you some old pictures or something for reference if you can't remember what they look like. 
but by means don't copy anything just use ideas for reference but make it all yours you never know what happens when you start creating what you come across a lot of problem solving going on here Check this out. Uh, use a soft leaded pencil and then come in and do some uh, gray tones for some shadows with your ink drawing. It really it kind of enhances it. Light and spark. show you some student work here. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, they, did, they did some good work here, so I'm going to plug this in so you can see it. Uh, we'll catch you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, Mr. A, out.